So for today's video, I'm actually going to be discussing seven Stephen King books that I liked less upon a reread. Last week, if you didn't see, I actually did the 10 Stephen King books that I liked even more upon a reread. Today is going to be the opposite, where I talk about seven, I believe I have seven Stephen King books that when I reread them, I actually enjoyed them less. Now, whether that's like a lot less or like a little bit less, I'll go into it with each individual book. Uh, but definitely let me know in the comments which Stephen King books you liked less upon a reread. And with like the books in the previous video, these can be for various reasons. And yeah, we'll get into it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So in the previous video, I mentioned that I liked Dr. Sleep even more upon a reread. And I actually like it more and more because I think I've read this like three or four times. I like it a bit more every time I read it. And I actually do like it a bit more than its counterpart, The Shining. So like I mentioned in the previous video, the first time I read The Shining, absolutely loved it. Gave it five stars and just really enjoyed it. And then, you know, I read it right before the release of Dr. Sleep, which I enjoyed. But at the time, I did enjoy The Shining a bit more. But I will say every time that I've reread them, because usually I'll read them back to back, I kind of like The Shining a little bit less, and then I like Dr. Sleep a little bit more. And the reason for that, I'm not really sure. Maybe it's just because, you know, unpopular opinion, I do love the movie a bit more than the book. And the book, you know, the very first time I read it was very compelling because it was, it was creepy, and I just wanted to figure out how it was different than the movie, and the characters were all compelling. But for me, I don't know, maybe it's just the writing style too, because I do think that the writing style is more to my liking in Doctor Sleep for whatever reason. It's still a fantastic book, and obviously it's a classic for a reason, but for me, it's not really like a five-star book anymore. It's more of like a four, four and a half star excellent Stephen King book. It's still great, but for whatever reason, I do tend to like it a bit less upon a reread. Next book I have to talk about here is The Long Walk, which is one of the very first Richard Bachman books. First time I read this, loved it. Had it in my top 10 Stephen King books for a long time. But, you know, like with The Shining, every time that I reread it, I tend to like it a little bit less. I think the first time you read it, it's just very compelling figuring out. I mean, obviously you're not gonna figure out like who's gonna make it to the end because like it's all from this one kid's perspective. But it's just interesting to see the journey of it all. But when you reread it, you know, you already know what's going to happen. And there's not as many compelling characters as some of his other great books. Uh, there are some. But for me, the journey just gets less and less compelling every time that I read it. So it went from being like a five star, like fantastic Stephen King book. Now it's actually kind of more like a three and a half star book. I know a lot of people love it and they love to reread it. But for me, it's not one of my favorites anymore. It's still good, but I do like it a little bit less each time that I revisit it. This next book is definitely going to be unpopular. I know a lot of people love this book. I actually did a rant review for it a little while ago, I think sometime last year. It's right here. Oh, that's the book. You already know what it is. <laughs> uh, it's it's Pet Cemetery. Uh, the very first time I read this book, I was definitely compelled because I loved watching the movie when I was younger. Uh, but I did have my gripes with it even then. And every time I reread it, I just kind of think, oh, I, I hate some of the decisions, like writing decisions that Stephen King made in this book. He basically spoils a major event before it even happens. And every time I read that, I just get so frustrated because like, it just would have been better if we wouldn't see it coming. I, I understand like why he does it. But at the same time, I, I just don't like it. And I get, I get people's explanation for why King does it the way he does. I don't like it. <laughs> and, there's all, and you know, I, I go into a way more detail about why I don't love this book in my rant review. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. I don't hate the book. Don't get me wrong. It's still a good book. It's just never been one of my favorites. It's more of a three-star book for me. So yeah, uh, I like it a little bit less. Uh, each time. It's really not a, a Stephen King book that I, I mean, I will eventually reread it, but it's not one that I'm like excited to revisit again. And this next one is actually a Stephen King collection that I liked a bit less the second time around and third time around. 
Uh, the very first time I read this, I was like, oh man, this is amazing. But then you read it the second time, you're like, oh wait, yeah, th this wasn't that good and this was not that good. And actually, I really only love like four or five of the stories in this collection. Uh, but yeah, I'm of course talking about Skeleton Crew. This one might be one of his most overrated collections. It obviously has some of his all-time best stories, don't get me wrong. You've obviously got The Mist, one of his best horror novellas. You've got some of his like top five, top ten short stories in The Jaunt, Survivor Type, The Raft. And then you've got personal favorites of mine like Mrs. Todd's Shortcut and Beach World, which might be an unpopular opinion. I love that. But you've also got some just weird, not that great stories in here. I mean, you've got a couple of um, poems, which, you know never been one of my favorites but you've also got you know like the wedding gig isn't that good Kane rose up the monkey i think a lot of people like but i think it's overrated i don't like animatronic stuff like little like figurines and stuff coming to life trying to kill people i always just think it's goofy and it goes on way too long some of these stories just kind of go on too long or they're just i don't know this is kind of where it happens because night shift is a five-star collection all of those most of those stories are relatively short and compact but this is where we start to get some longer stuff and then nightmares of dreamscapes forget about it <laughs> uh but you know there are some good stories in here don't get me wrong like you've got the ballad of the flexible bullet or processor of the gods and like you've got some stuff in here but it's definitely a mixed bag and the first time i read it for whatever reason I don't know, maybe I had rose-tinted glasses on or whatever, just like, oh, this is amazing, the mist, the jaunt, survivor type, yes. But then you reread it and you're just like, oh yeah, there, there's a bunch of crap in here as well, mixed in with all that greatness. So yeah, definitely upon a reread, I liked it a, a bit less. Uh, this next book, I'm not, I, th this was kind of the, the weird pick for me because I don't really, I honestly don't remember why I loved this book in the first place. I don't know, but I'm going to go with it. Uh, it's The Dark Half by by Stephen King. No shit, Jake. Uh, but yeah, The Dark Half written in like 1989. It's got kind of a kooky premise where, you know, this was written after he was outed as being Richard Bachman. And this book is all about an, alter, or an author's alter ego literally coming to life and killing people. And it's kind of got a mystery aspect of like, you know, there's a detective trying to figure out what's going on. It's a fun book, don't get me wrong, but for whatever reason, the first time I read this book, I loved it. And I thought like, why isn't this like in people's top 10 and top 20? Like, it's an amazing book. And then for whatever reason, the second time around, I was just like, it's good. I liked it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't love it like I did the first time I read it. That happens sometimes with books. Like your first experience is just like, oh, it's amazing. And then the second time you're like, why did I love this so much? I don't know. It's a fun book, but it's not, it's not one of my favorites anymore. Uh, this next book is a Dark Tower book. Um, it, it wasn't really one of my favorites to begin with, but every time I go to reread it, I kind of, I'm not dreading it, but I'm just like, yeah, it's, it's not that great. I'll read it, but like, it's kind of a whatever book for me now. I'm of course talking about The Wind Through the Keyhole, which is Dark Tower book eight, or, you know, it's book four and a half. It kind of takes place in between books four and five. You know, read it whichever way you want to. But for me, it's just not that good. The first time I read it, I read it after reading book seven, the, the conclusion to the Dark Tower. And it was just fun to get back with the quartet and see what they were up to, even though they're not really that present in the book. This book is really kind of compelled or comprised, I should say, of Roland telling a story within a story within a story. And you've got some kind of, I guess, pseudo Dark Tower related stuff happening. It's okay. It's fine. Uh, like I said, it's not really a book. It's not really a Dark Tower book that I'm like excited to get back into and revisit. Because like I said, the content is really only there for like a fraction of the book. It's just not that compelling. It's definitely, definitely my least favorite Dark Tower book now. And the seventh and last book I have to talk about, I loved this book when I first read it. I actually, it was actually very short that I actually like just went to Barnes and Noble one day and just 
for a couple hours, I just read it and <laughs> didn't have to buy it. I was like, yeah, great. Five stars. Excellent. Don't have to buy it. And then, you know, it came out with some sequels and the sequels kind of really ruined my love for the book because then, you know what? I haven't even said what the damn book is yet. It's Gwendy's Button Box. So yeah, I, I read this, like I literally just walked into Barnes & Noble one day, read it, put it back, gave it five stars. <laughs> I didn't have to buy it. Uh, it's very short. It's novella length. It's like 160 pages. It, it was fantastic the first time I read it. But then, you know, going back and reading the sequels and figuring out where Gwendy's story goes from there, and then going back to try to reread this book, I don't like it as much because <laughs> I realize, like, where her story leads to. The second book, Gwendy's Magic Feather, solely written by the other guy, uh, Richard Chismar, I really did not like. Gave it two stars. And then the third book, Gwendy's Final Task, I liked slightly more but still really did not like it gave it two and a half stars it's got some interesting dark tower connections i guess but overall just seeing where her story goes man i'm i'm just sad that this isn't just a standalone it, it could have been a standalone i could have really enjoyed it for what it was because it is a really good story but i don't know just seeing where her story goes kind of just ruins it for me all right, so those are seven Stephen King books, if I'm counting correctly here. Editing Jake will tell me otherwise. But those should be seven Stephen King books that I enjoyed less upon a reread. The previous video, I did 10 Stephen King books that I enjoyed more. For this video, seven books that I enjoyed less. And definitely let, let me know what y'all's thoughts are on these books. Do you agree with me in thinking that these books are uh, less good upon a reread? Or do you disagree with me and maybe you've reread a few of these books and you're like, oh man, it gets better every time. And definitely let me know in the comments, what are Stephen King books that you've enjoyed less upon a reread? I want to know about it in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and the Bookish Sermon Discord. Join us next Friday for when I discuss Stephen King books that I want or need to reread. And I'll explain that with those picks in the video next week, next Friday. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a fantastic day.